Hi everyone, this is Kansi from Atop Serenity Hill. And today I'm gonna to work in my art journal, as normal, I tend to do that a lot. And uh, this is just a bullet journal that I have um, been using. Um, I usually use a lot of journals I create, but I started using this at a class that I was teaching because it was convenient for everyone. And I've really enjoyed it. So I'll leave the link below for this because I've had a couple of people ask me about this journal. So today I am going to work using prompts like I usually do, um, or like I, I like to do. I don't always do it, but I do like using them a lot. And I'm going to use the prompts today from a little mini class, a free mini class that I have currently for anyone who wants to subscribe to my email list. And I will, again, the link will be below. Um, there's a YouTube video, a little bit about it. Plus you can just go sign up if you want to. And it includes... A set of prompts. It also includes all the printables to make these uh, super cute mini little journals that look like this on the inside. So the printables include are included for all those. And so I thought I would pull a couple prompts from the deck and just work on the page and see what happens. The goal is to set the timer for 15 minutes. I'm going to use the 15 minutes just because um, I like to time things. Uh, it, it tends to make me not overthink. Um, and one of the concepts of this little journal class is to work in like, like one, two, three, four, five minute increments, nothing crazy more than five. Um, but obviously I'm working in a little bigger space this time. And sometimes I just do three prompts and then just use whatever else comes up. But I think I'm just going to keep pulling prompts until we see... Uh, what happens and in the 15 minutes and um, I see where it goes okay so let's see I've got my timer okay uh, I always use this timer because well I'm fil filming with my phone so that's not handy so let's just start with the first one start with this one so splatter your favorite color all right I'm gonna start the timer all right and my favorite color is green. I'm gonna try something, and I'm kind of working with you in real time uh, for today, and we're gonna see how it goes. Uh, I could use paint, watercolor. I could use um, like an acrylic paint, which I always have acrylic paints handy next to my desk. But I'm gonna try something and see if I can get it to splatter, which is this Jane Davenport, um, I think they're called mermaid markers and it is watercolor in a water brush. And let's just, oh yeah, look, there you go. You can barely see it, but it is splattering. It's also splattering up everywhere. So let's grab some paper. It's an old jelly print that I have. And maybe it won't go on me either. <laughs> it's the fun thing about splattering. You just never know where are you going to splatter it. So I can also squeeze a little bit and it'll put more ink into the brush. And that'll give me some maybe some bigger splatters. Get some maybe off the edges a little bit. I always encourage people to go off the edge because then it, I always liken it to like cutting a piece of fabric. You want the pattern to repeat and look like it's disappearing off the saw, off the edge. All right, I think I'm good with that. Now, this one thing about it, I'm gonna show you on this side, you can see that it's coming through. These markers, I love them for the color, the vibrancy. They react to everything and they go through everything. So bear that in mind. This I don't mind because it's a page that's in progress for me and I'll probably just incorporate whatever's happening. And the same thing on this side, I might collage on top of it or paint and it won't matter, okay? So I also, I'm just, instead of drying it, I'm just gonna smear and just dry it that way, okay? 
Now you'll see if depending on what happens after this, you could see that it will tend to react back with whatever I'm using, right? So uh, next prompt says, I think this is just one. Nope, it's two. Okay, just one. Glue bits of collage. Awesome pants. All right, so I have this just sitting here. Um, it's I made a prompt book because this is a talking video. I made a prompt, um, not a prompt book, a tag book uh, that I made from scrapbook papers. And then all the little bits are still here, all the corner triangles. And I probably will do something with them at some point, but right now they're sitting on my desk and I have been instructed by my prompt deck to glue on bits of collage. So I'm going to do that. All right. So I'm not, I have a feeling because I'm talking, this page might not finish, but we're going to see. I might just keep going after the 15 minutes. But it's nice to see where I go. When I do 15 minute pages, I usually am way more, I guess the word prepared would be the right word for this. Um, I usually have decided like a bunch of supplies and they're sitting all over my desk so that I have a bunch of things to pull from. Uh, if I'm doing prompts, I pull them ahead of time. And so I have different things. Like if it was bits of collage, I would have had lots of different versions of collage sitting around. Um, splattering your favorite paint, I probably would have put out, you know, the acrylic would have had my watercolor handy, all those fun things. And so I'm a little more organized, I guess, would be when I'm doing 15 minute pages. So this is kind of an experiment of working in real time and talking it through. You can hear the beep. That means five minutes is gone. And I think I'm gonna move on because I feel like I could be gluing for days. So let's just see what the next prompt says and go from there. All right, let's grab one. Let's see. Stamp a focal point. All right. So I have some stamps, hand carved stamps. I got my black Ranger archival ink stamp pad. And a focal point to me would be something that, you know, it wouldn't be just a mark. So it wouldn't necessarily, um, it wouldn't necessarily be something like this, but it would be more like this eye or uh, this butterfly. And I'm loving the eye. So I think an A focal point I mean, it's saying stamp a focal point. I probably will stamp this eyeball multiple times. So the focal point to me would be eyes. I could do it that way. Okay. Again, going off the edges. And I also love just the shadow prints. If I'm gonna, for this, I'm, I like to use the shadow prints as part of my textural backgrounds. You might wanna just go over on a piece of paper. Okay, lost the camera there for a minute. So obviously we're going over the 15 minutes. So I've got my focal point and we're gonna grab a different Add white gesso over a section. Okay, so the thing with over a section um, could be a lot of things. It could be that I just go in and, you know, start making circles with it, which I might do, actually. Um, it could be that I go in and add um, white to the eyes, okay, which I think I might actually do as well. So let's start with that. All 
right, so I'm gonna go in and just a little bit, nothing crazy. Not on all the eyes, maybe one, two, three. And the page is beige, so it's not showing up. Gesso is very transparent, so it's not showing up great. So that's the other thing, I'm adding white gesso and yet um, I'm on a beige page, so it doesn't show up great. So another thought is I just grabbed some stencils and it just says add. So it could be add in any way. So I think I might use this and a makeup sponge. I'm gonna use this makeup sponge and I'm gonna add white gesso, but I'm gonna use it through the stencil. And let's just see. Again, I'm, I'm you know, I'm just playing. It's, a, it's white on beige. It's not gonna show up really well but I'm following the prompt just to see what happens because, you know, it could have been something, there's my 10 minutes, could have been something crazy that, you know, I really enjoyed, but I've added my white. It hasn't done a whole lot, but there you have it. It's added. All right. So now we need another prompt. There are 12 prompts in this uh, deck for the mini class. I also have another prompt deck that I sell on Etsy. It's a printable prompt deck, so that I'll link, link below as well. All right, so use pink, paint, collage, or markers. So I wanna cover some big swaths of paint, paper with this. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna scrape a little pink on and see. And that helps too, because the gesso is still a little wet. So it will mix with the gesso. Also across the middle, because I want the page to feel connected and not like I did something on this page and I did something on this page. And don't forget off the edges. So I'm gonna do a little off the edge there, maybe a little down here. Doesn't have to be a lot, just so that your eye travels across it and it disappears off the edge a little bit. Okay, pink added. I also like to, instead of using the heat gun, since that's loud, I'm just gonna smear it some more. See what happens. All right, next prompt. We might end up with all 12 today. Use bubble wrap, ooh, for fun texture. Love it. All right, I have two bubble wraps here. One is one I've used numerous times, but I do have a fun new piece here. And now I'm gonna introduce a new color. I feel like I wanna introduce one of my other favorite colors. Turquoise. I also don't have the green, hasn't shown up a lot. So I might end up adding some of that as well. But first, okay, don't forget off the edges.
Oops. Okay. Now this is, I do have to dry this. So you're going to have to, I'm going to have to put you on a little bit of mute and dry. Okay, so I am back. The timer's still going and it looks like I only have one minute left, but we're going to keep going after. So this is about as far as I got with 15 minutes. No plan. Keep adding and I'm talking at the same time. Most of you are not chatting while you're creating at home. So add the colors of winter. So winter as a concept is depending on where you are. If you're in a, there we are, 15 minutes, okay? And I'm gonna keep going. So we don't, now you know 15 minutes where I got. But winter again, if you're in a warm climate, winter could be lush and green. It could be tropical. Um, if you're in a cold area, then winter could be lots of icy blues, um, still dark greens because maybe you're in a space that has evergreens. Um, you know, lots of muted purples for shadows, that sort of thing. So you decide what that means to you, all right? So I've got a couple things that are sitting on my table. I've got this vintage wine. It's like a purple color. I also have this antique teal, which has a bit of an evergreen feel to it to me. So I've got those two colors. I have turquoise, so maybe what I need is a more of a icy blue or like like that kind of periwinkle blue that might work. All right, so I've grabbed those. Table is getting very messy. So I'm adding the colors of winter. That's my next step. And sure I might I feel like the purple first of all I don't want to lose the fact that some of my eyes my eyes are supposed to be my focal point because that was one you know stamp a focal point so I'm gonna make the irises purple okay and I think I'm gonna go do this one too this one because again pulling that off the edge here and here that draws the purple across the page Okay. Perfect. All right, so I've got purple. I'm gonna keep going. I think I'm gonna add, I might add some leaves with this stencil here. What I'm trying to look for is something that's gonna, you know, tie everything together. I haven't started, it doesn't feel cohesive to me yet. So that's really what I'm looking for. Is something that feels like it's just tying everything together. So, and all I can do is just keep experimenting and see, you know, what feels right. actually like that color but I need to pour it out on my palette I use it just as a test to see because the other thing is just because I put something down and I might hate it oops hang on oh excuse me <laughs> just whacking everything um I might hate it and be like oh well I don't really like where that's going my solution when that happens is one yes you could cover it up that that's absolutely a solution but if I put it here and I'm like, oh, I'm not loving it, I would probably still put a little piece here and a little piece here. So it's in a, three different sections. And in the end, it might get covered 
or it might not, but it doesn't feel like I put something in a section and just forgot about it, okay? It was, you know, a mistake and there's this like weird hanging leaf off in the corner. But I do like what it's doing. So I'm gonna keep adding some of the leaves. It's kind of like you're seeing through the seeing through the jungle kind of which is fun. Like the leaves, yeah, the leaves are surrounding the eyes, which is interesting to me. And I'm still going to, you know, work on the eyes a little bit. Just because I'm using the prompts doesn't mean if something needs to be finished or I need to add an extra mark or um, you feel compelled to go in a different direction than a prompt tells you, then do that. That's absolutely fine. There is there is no rules here. I'm just working with prompts to show you that sometimes you can build a page with that if you're stumped, if your creativity is like, I just, I don't know what to do today. Then grab some prompts and just follow them. It might turn out to be a little kooky and that's okay. It might not finish. You might just be playing with it and then be done, you know. Time for dinner, your kid's called, time to go to work, you know, you're just done. You had enough creativity <laughs> for the time, that's all the time you had. But you touched your artwork, you touched your creativity, and every time you touch it, it just adds up. I will tell you that one minute counts, five minutes counts, a single mark counts, it all counts. You don't need a big space of time. Sometimes you do, but most of the time you can just keep playing and it'll, it'll add up. Ooh, this is kooky, isn't it? Okay, let's see, we've got some more prompts left. Let's see if anything strikes me with the next one. Add washi or masking tape. Well, that is interesting. All right. I'm not sure about the washi, but I might grab some masking tape. So all it's doing is just adding another layer of texture, because definitely because I'm I'm pulling it off in tiny little pieces here. I'm gonna go across the center. Again, I want the page to feel not half one side, half the other. This I'm not gonna take off the edge, I'm just gonna leave it. And then don't forget, I still have this periwinkle color. And I'm just going to see how that feels on the washi. Uh, not washi, but the masking tape so it doesn't feel so beige. Did I get all the pieces? I think so. Okay. 
Let's see, we've got four left. Might as well do them all. Drip paint on the page. Now, dripping and splattering, similar to me. I guess dripping would be to just plunk big chunks of paint on it. Um, I don't think I want to do that. But what I do think I would like to do is put some white paint down. Like now it's getting super busy to me. So I'm going to take some white gesso. Whoops. That wasn't quite what I wanted to do. I wanted to wet it. I'm going to thin it down a little bit. And then I'm going to, so I've thinned it down, my little well here. And so this is kind of dripping, splattering, splatter, drip, splatter, drip. Dripping could be that you, you know, make it really thick at the top and then tip and let it run. And I might actually do that if I put enough white at the top. Let's see how messy this gets. I got a spray bottle of water. And I'm gonna just spray. Maybe let it drip around a little bit. All right, I'm going to dry it and we'll see what the next thing says. Okay, so I've pretty much dried it. It was very wet because I was spraying water on it as well. So a couple things as I'm drying it. One, the masking tape came up a little bit. So I'm gonna just make sure that everything is glued. And also bits of my collage are starting to unglue. So I'm just gonna reconnect a little bit here and there where it feels necessary. Okay. And then let's see what the next prompts. We got three and I'm gonna do all 12, might as well since we're on a roll and see see where it comes out to, okay? So, I had a photo from a magazine. Okay, so I'm gonna have to pause for a second and find me a photo, because that is not sitting, and I'll be back. All right, so, because my colors are kind of crazy busy, at this point, even the eyes are not really a focal point. They are, but they aren't. Um, I mean, they're there, but and if I made them black, they probably would pop more. And I probably will try and keep them. But what I ended up doing was finding, I, I was going with the color scheme. So I ended up with like this big rose, um, a pot of flowers. I love this garden. It goes with, you know, it goes with the color scheme. I also found this picture with lots of green. So I kept it similar. And what I'm going to end up doing is cutting a bunch of them out and um, seeing like what I think will work. Okay, so I'll stick it in fast forward a little bit and just cut some pieces out and then we'll play with that. Okay, so I have a couple pieces. I do love this big rose. I'm not sure if that's necessary. I love the idea of the rose. I almost feel like it just needs some leaves. Coming out. So I'm going to cut cut this out and just 
And you can see I'm not being super fussy cutty about this. I'm not that particular about that. But if I had the rose and I'm trying to still trying to keep my eyes, you know, I can I can fussy cut that a little bit more so it doesn't feel so straight, but Oh, I like that. Okay, so I've got my rose, and what I'm going to do before I glue it down is I'm going to look and see what my last two prompts are because they might actually give me some guidance about the next step. Okay, so doodle marks with a pencil and use the colors of fire. Okay, so fire being, you know, red, yellow, orange, um, which don't necessarily go, but I can also use. I don't use specifically red, yellow, and orange. I can pick one. Um, and fire also comes in blues, obviously. Uh, so let's see. And then doodle marks with a pencil. Okay. All right, we're gonna try something here. I think I like this here. I like the idea of the doodle marks, which I have an idea on, but I'm going to take some yellow and put down kind of like a halo. I bet the rose will live in. So prompts are meant to be interpreted how you interpret them. What's, you know, what's your first hit when you read the prompt? Okay, that looks like fun. I like that. I also feel that I might take... Okay, see, this is where things go. So fire, red, orange, yellow. So I've gotten yellow and then I'm seeing the pink and I'm like, what if I add, do what I was just doing, but continue my, that idea out. So now I've got orange. So I'm, I'm actually going to use the idea of use the colors. I'm going to move that just so that I won't keep catching it. I'm going to use the colors of the fire because once I put the yellow down, then it was like, yeah, why don't you try it this way? Okay, and then... I'm going to grab my pink because, again, it doesn't have to be red. I'm not a fan of red anyway. I tend to use hot pink as my red. Getting paint on all the other pages, but not that that matters. Okay, and then 
My other thought was the, so I've used my fires. I've got my photo. And then the last one being doodle marks with a pencil. Now, it didn't say it had to be a pencil pencil. What I mean by that is a, you know, lead pencil. I'm gonna use colored pencils. And I'm going to add some leaves to this rose. Using colored pencils. So I've got a leaf there. You might not be able to see it, but I'm, I'm just using the lighter green. just to see if I liked it, and I did. And I'm just gonna add some and see how I like it. What do I think? And if I don't like it, I will add paint. Like if I don't feel like it's covering right or, whoops, throwing pencils everywhere. It's not doing what I want it to do. I think I'll add a third out here. And I might have to go back to the paint just because it might not work with the pencil. But I've added the pencil. So if we're being, you know, true to our prompt, I've added my prompt, but it's not working super good. So I still have some of this paint left. I think my finger isn't working, so I need to be more brush oriented with it. I still have the creepy floating eyes in the background, which I actually like. <laughs> I think that's kind of funny. And at this point, so I've done the pencils, so I've done all my prompts. And now we're going to just see what else I want to do. I'm going to dry the leaves and have a couple more thoughts. Okay, so I'm going to grab this paint marker and see if it shows up. It does. And then it's not got enough white for me. So I've got oops, this one to be best. Like I just wanted to add swirls all over the background. And I can't even tell you exactly why. It just, that's what popped into my head. Like add swirls in the background with white paint pen. Sometimes I just don't question my intuition. If, if it's feeling like it's the right move for me, I'm just gonna go for it. So don't question it. If it doesn't do right, like this might look completely ridiculous when I'm done, then it's just information. Next time I have that thought, think about it. Is it the move I will really want to do? Is it that, why do I want it? Is it because I needed it to be lighter 
Was it too dark in the background? Like, what was the reasoning behind me wanting to swirl the whole background? I think part of it for me when it was the colors were very dark, bright, dark, bold. They're all of that. Um, I love the rose that I found. The eyes were no longer working, so this took care of that. This has the illusion, a little bit of creating like a lacy background, which goes with the romanticism of the rose. Okay, I'm gonna put the rose down again. Okay, and this needs some light. I've got light paint. I'm gonna try, ah, that works good. Just adding some lighter colors with the color pencil. So again, I'm back to doodling. This is not particularly doodling, but why not? I'm adding some lighter green, so it gives it some more not so flat. Mm. Love that. Let me glue down my rose and see what I like. See what we think. Well, that was unexpected <laughs> where I ended up. And that's the really fun thing about doing creativity. The joy and delight of just the unexpected. Make sure that's in the center. Oops. It's a piece of collage underneath that doesn't want to stay put. That's what it would look like. I've got a little piece that's coming up here. So we need to just put a little bit of paint onto it. Something is still a little wet, that's all. But that's okay. Works. Well, there you have it. All my, uh, all 12 of my prompts created. It looks like a glorious garden with a big blooming rose in the middle. I hope you enjoyed this longer video with me chatting with you the whole time. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up if you have not already and check out the free mini class with the link below and I will see you in another video. Thanks friends.